Hey everyone, welcome for joining us today. Um, we'll take a, a minute or two to let a few more people um, hop on the webinar with us. Uh, I'm Sheila Davis with uh, Swaco, and I'm looking forward to having a great conversation about organizing a green team today. Um, I think we're ready for our next slide. The, uh, before we get started, um, there's just a few things that I want to um, cover real quick. Um, there will be a uh, follow-up email. It's a PDF of the, of the presentation, so don't worry about taking notes. Plus, we will send out a survey to capture feedback, so we encourage you to take a few minutes to complete that when it arrives in your inbox. Um, you are on mute, so you know, uh, we'll keep you in that uh, format. If you do want to talk with us, we ask you to use the chat button for questions and to share your information. If you want to connect with others on today's call, then go ahead and put that information in the chat. Um, the meeting will be recorded so that you're aware uh, that we will be doing that. Um, Introductions, how about myself? It's great to meet you. I'm a transplant from Northeast Ohio and I moved down here to Columbus in December last year, so it's been a year now. Um, so far, I'm enjoying the community and I can see why Columbus is a growing and, and is attracting uh, attention as a place to live and work. I have been with Swaco uh, since July of 2021 and in the past I had experience in commercial sales and as a representative for the waste and hauling industry and working to help businesses implement recycling. I've spent many years in the private sector in manufacturing tech and print industries. Uh, some things about Swaco. If you are not familiar with Swaco, Swaco stands for the Solid Waste Authority of Central Ohio. We came into being in 1989 when the law was passed to create solid waste districts. There are 52 of them. Franklin County is Swaco's jurisdiction and we're the only one in Ohio that operates and oversees a landfill. Swaco works to divert materials from the landfill, extending the life of the landfill. And I specifically work it with the business sector so that uh, we can help achieve the goal of 75% diversion by 2032. Um, I do have a poll question for you. So we will launch the poll, take a second to to review of them. So how much of the material in the landfill do you think comes from the commercial sector? You have three choices there, 50%, 34%, or 60%. Take a second and pick your, um, pick your answer and we'll see how close you are to what the correct answer is. So um, the answers, the, the next slide would, uh, give us poll results, which um, I'm not able to see what that looks like. Let's see here. So I'm not sure what the, what, how many people answered the poll question, but I'll give you the right answer. The correct answer is that 60% of the um, current waste going into the landfill is coming from the commercial sector. That is a large portion of materials that can be recycled or um, diverted from the landfill. So it's important to, um, to know what, where, we're, where we're coming from and why we're so um, encouraging and helping businesses um, embrace recycling and, and building green teams to do so. So today's, today's presentation is about 10 steps to organizing a green team. And um, you, may, you may not have a green team at your business or you are wondering if you need one or uh, maybe you're brand new and you're just starting that process. So from my experience, you may need a green team if you have a lot of employees, usually more than 20, and if you have multiple locations or, or branches. Some benefits to having a green team, you know, you want to leverage the energy of employees who are interested in sustainability. You'd like to provide feedback to management on potential sustainability programs. And um, having a green team can organize and engage other coworkers on sustainability projects. Um, there are 10 steps. So the first step is to build the team. And how are you going to do that? Well, we suggest that you um, send an email or an inner office um, invite for your meeting. 
put up signs in public spaces announcing the formation of a team. This could be on the doors to the restrooms or a break room bulletin board, or possibly you have a TV screen for digital information. Create an engaging display, maybe show what the green team is all about, recycling, energy efficiency, energy conservation, litter prevention, those types of things, even water reduction. And then provide information that educates and piques the interests of the parties who might be interested in joining. That's how you can drum up some, some interest in, in building the team. On the next slide, we're going to um, you're going to be hosting a meeting. And some things about uh, that are really important about um, about th this hosting a meeting is that you want to get leadership on board. It's important to have a sponsor at the management level and have people um, from various departments as part uh, to be part of your team. The diversity is important. It's just part of the successful um, steps of any program, especially for recycling. Everyone needs to be committed to the cause and the team from all parts of the company. There are time commitments that should be shared up front and defined so that those interested in engaging know what the expectations are for being on the team. Uh, the first meeting can be a place to share your ideas, discuss uh, moving forward or interest levels or what the next steps might be, and you know, call out short-term goals and objectives when you start out and this you know you might want to think small maybe your company um your company may not be recycling anything at the moment so consider getting employees to recycle paper and cardboard start small and work your way up to larger projects including you know plastic cans and glass and also make next step plans before you adjourn your meeting this might look like um, takeaway items each person is committed to doing to get the team up and functioning or it might be a short to-do list that two or three people are uh, going to work on and report back on for the next meeting. Next slide. And also, it's really important that you assign roles and responsibilities. The saying many hands make light, light work is true. Many people on the committee will make it easier to do more and not feel overwhelmed. Uh, more than one volunteer can be assigned to roles as subcommittee members. Make sure each team member has a role that a job that matches their skill sets as volunteers. And I can think of at least six roles that you would want to consider filling for your green team. Um, if you have 10 or 20 people interested in being on the team, members can form even subcommittees, you know, to plug into where help is needed. So the six roles that you would need, secretary for taking minutes, maybe an event planning person to organize or coordinate activities that are being planned, uh, a volunteer organizer, or a person that helps keeping records of who is participating and what events are being attended, a person from finance who might be your treasurer or help with funding, um, the fundraising activities you might be doing, also um, your leadership or management representative. This would be a spokesperson who you know, connects the group to leadership. And of course you have communications, those people who would be maybe handling email or social media or internal announcements uh, you know, to talking to your um, your fellow employees about the projects of the green team. We're gonna take a second and check the chat for any questions at this time. And there doesn't seem to be any questions, so we're gonna move on. Uh, the, the fourth step in establishing a green team or organizing a green team is to establish some meeting times. Uh, meeting times, uh, may be different for every type of business, but we recommend that you start with two times a month as the plan. Uh, it's kind of an effective cadence. The first meeting might be the group as a whole and maybe be more formal with committees or you know, providing status updates on where you are. And then the second meeting might be um, a subcommittees or groups that are working in to dive into issues like a working session. This also um, you know, might be a time if you were going to work, meet with custodial staff or have a phone call with your hauler, if you're setting up recycling, it's just gives you carved out time to do some of the tasks that might be needed uh, to accomplish your goals. But of course, we always suggest that you, with the green team initiatives, you should start with recycling first because that's the easiest thing to, um, to accomplish. The, 
Step five is outreach and create a plan. So this can be a calendar and SharePoint or other sharing platform where your um, team is, can see results of your team's efforts. It might be a bulletin board in the break room or where your green team can post updates on what they're working on. Could be an email that's uh, shared once a month to all the, um, that provides updates. And it also could be um, any questions that you're having, you know, you, um, you could provide answers to those. You could report stats for participating at meetings. You could collect data um, that might impact your team. Uh, you will also want to promote um, participation so that people not on the team might want to show up or participate in an event or contribute when a collection is taking place. So um, um, let's see, I'm on step six, correct? Yeah. Develop a green team mission statement. So um, this is can be challenging for some uh, some people because mission statements are uh, are important. A green mission statement becomes really the foundation of a company's sustainability efforts. It provides the organization and stakeholders with an understanding of what's most important and what your company can do to protect the environment and be more socially responsible. I'm guessing your company already has an overreaching mission statement and we're really not interested in changing that. Instead, the green mission statement is a supplement to take your company mission statement and consider how that can be delivered through a sustainable view. One, once your company has a green mission statement, then develop a mission statement for the team. Brainstorm ideas and initiatives that fit with your business, align with the company's mission and interests, the members of your team. It can be as simple as two or three ideas that the team wants to embrace. All right, we have another section for questions and just to double check in the chat and uh, don't see any questions at the moment, which is fine, we'll continue on. Um, we're on to step seven. Um, so maybe there was once a green team at your business, um, but it was years ago and it didn't make it through the challenges of COVID, or maybe you should check to see if any initiatives exist that need revisiting, or if management would provide direction for the green team and the projects that, you, the projects that they want you to work on first. Some areas management may want a green team to look at could include supply chains, um, you know, how to make them more sustainable, reduce packaging for materials, you know, coming into the business or packaging for what is shipping out, or maybe evaluate the vendors you're using and use more sustainable companies for office supplies. Uh, a sustainable supply chain is a large initiative that may take a year or more and would most likely involve purchasing and supply chain employees. Um, energy reduction might be another um, initiative. This could mean LED lighting, reducing water usage, or other energy efficient actions a company might engage in for financial benefits. And of course, we have to mention food waste reduction here at Suico. This could mean adding compo composting at work or signing up for a food rescue group or creating a sheer spot versus throwing food away. All right, step eight is about building your volunteer base. Um, it's okay if you have remote or um, satellite teams, even employees who are remote or hybrid can be on a green team and they can make a difference. Remember to ask often, some people say no, not now, and they'll say yes later. So keep asking for participation, whether that is on the team or for a single planned activity. Um, be inclusive from the custodial staff to the president, invite all to attend. And remember to reward and celebrate when goals are met. This will attract more volunteers and they will notice good things are taking place and they'll want to engage. Specific initiatives can attract short-term volunteers and others can attract committed, regular, long-term volunteers. So, so create a variety of activities for engagement. So 
So step nine, we're almost to the end of our presentation here. Um, we, have, we want you to invest in learning opportunities. Um, if you weren't aware, you can tour the Franklin County landfill with your green team, or we encourage management to make it a requirement that managers are visiting the landfill tour as part of an onboarding process. We also have um, a video on our website for the virtual tour, if the being in person is not an option. Um, we use uh, Swaco resources for content at meetings and to share with the green team of at your company. And uh, we have the Recycle White webinars covering a lot of topics. There are likely to be topics for other initiatives available for discussing energy, water, and other conservation goals. So tap into those. And there, there are uh, you know, podcasts as well, videos on those topics that your team might use as an opportunity to learn more about sustainability. And then the, um, the tenth step is creating momentum with proven results. So we do this with, uh, by collecting data, using your analytics, keep sign-up sheets and volunteer attendance numbers, use the data to show improvement and impact, make stakeholders and management aware of the achievements of your group, share the financial impact that the changes are making, uh, proven results, make it easier to get more funding, Grow your team by showing the success this, that you have accomplished and recognize your subcommittees and participants who have attended whether one time or 10 times. Use the data to build momentum. Another quick check of the chat. We don't see any questions there, so that's fine. The next thing I wanna share with you is about the uh, Swaco Business Recycling Resources. If you have, of course, if you have any other questions, you know, about starting a recycling program, that's um, a green team helps do those. We have additional resources on our website. Um, they're available right now, including the Business Recycling Toolkit. Um, the images here on the screen are uh, just some of the steps that help you work through the process of setting up a recycling program. Uh, other uh, resources that I've um, Curated here, um, obviously the, the downloadable toolkit, there's a link there that, that will be uh, sent out in the PDF you get after the meeting today. There's also a waste audit tool that's part of our uh, resources we have at the Swaco uh, website. Uh, we have the savemorethanfood.org website. Uh, we also have uh, Recycle Right, which is the site that we use for um, answering all the questions you might have as to what do I do with this. It's easy to use and navigate to help you figure out where things go. And um, there's also a great resource that the city of Columbus had created, uh, Green Spot that talks about green teams and the responsibilities. Uh, there's a great worksheet in their, um, in their link that uh, allows you to record job responsibilities for people that are on your green team. And as you know, uh, in this job market, we have lots of open positions at Swaco. So we are encouraging people to um, you know, share that. Uh, there might be someone you know who is looking for a position who might be a good, it might be a good place for them to come to Swaco, whether that's in our communications department or uh, being the manager of fleet and facilities, a fleet mechanic. Um, we have obviously tra transfer drivers and uh, labor positions, heavy equipment operators, all those things are available. Um, on our links here and on our website. Finally, I want to thank you um, for joining the webinar today. The Recycle Right at Work series is new to Swaco and it's taking place the first Wednesday of the month. It happens six times a year. So the next one will be February 2nd, 2022. Uh, we would encourage you to watch this, the Swaco webinar page on our website for postings and the links to sign up. I also invite you to subscribe to the business newsletter. If you're not already subscribed, um, that will keep you informed about business recycling in Franklin County. And when you receive a survey, there is a place there for you to indicate if you want to be added to the Swaco newsletter, and I'll be happy to get you set up for that communication. Um, also, the next Swaco um, event in our Waste to Resources series is coming up December 7th, Green Your Holidays reduce waste, recycle more. I invite you to join Swaco and Columbus Green Spot for a simple ways to plan a more eco-friendly holiday season and maintain habits that are into the new year. They will cover topics such as food waste prevention, sustainable gift giving, decorations, and recyclability of various products and packaging. 
and you can sign up for free at the swaco.org under the webinar page. So it is uh, only 1221, so I have a few minutes uh, still on our webinar. If there's any questions, you can pop them into the chat. We'll be happy to um, discuss and answer. And of course, if you would like additional help, if your company thinks you need more one-on-one -on -one care, I'm happy to do that for you. And we can connect and have a, a phone call conversation about type of programming that you need help with, whether that's educational, setting up the recycling program, or helping you um, launch your green team, happy to help you in any of those ways. And if you don't have any other questions, we're glad you joined us and you're happy to hop off. And we'll stay on the call in case there are any that can all come into the chat. I don't see anybody with any questions. So time to end it. There is a question. I, I'm sorry, I need to check, double check that. Okay. Okay, so to subscribing to the business newsletter. So there's a um, there's there's actually a couple ways you can subscribe to that. Um, we have um, when you receive the survey, there will be a spot in there for you to indicate that you want to be included, and I will personally add you. And then uh, the other way is you can actually go to the Swaco.org website and you can select subscribe. There's uh, different newsletters for different topics. So you would be able to um, select what you want to. You might want to be more than just the business information. That's another way you can do it. The next, uh, the other question in the chat was, when is the next event? Um, well, we have the webinar to resources series, series, and that's on our webinar page. There's multiple webinars available for different topics, but the one specifically for Recycle Right at Work will be in February on the 2nd. Uh, it will be the same uh, Wednesday at noon. It will be a half an hour um, chat about um, you know, recycling topics at that time to be determined. And I think I have answered all the questions so far. We'll hang out here a few more minutes in case there is. Appreciate everyone's um, joining the call today and the opportunity to share the information. Again, you will get a copy of the recording and you will also get a um, the PDF. All right, I think that's good. We're going to say goodbye. Appreciate everybody. Have a happy holiday.